In this module, we will be discussing how to improve the quality of your data sets. Welcome to PropellerU. The best way to ensure you will capture good quality data is by verifying your equipment is ready for use, knowing the best practices for placing arrow points, and being prepared for any field complications that may arise. Specifically, you should check your hardware and ensure it is in good condition, confirm your flight plan is set up properly, review airspace and request access to controlled zones if needed, lastly, use proper arrow point placement in the field. For more detailed information, watch our training videos linked in the supporting documentation for planning missions, checking and unlocking airspace, and using arrow points. Before leaving the office, we suggest verifying your arrow points and drone are ready to use. Confirm that the arrow points used in the mission have been charged for at least five hours in the sun, or if you are using arrow point twos, they have been plugged into charge. Make sure you have enough batteries charged for your mission. It is also recommended that you have extra batteries in case you run into any unforeseen circumstances requiring a refly. Verify that the propellers do not show any visible signs of damages or cracks. If the propellers look worn or damaged, replace them for a safer flight. Inspect other parts of the aircraft to ensure that there are no signs of scrapes, dents, loose parts, or other physical damage. If you are using the Mavic 3 Enterprise, check that the detachable RTK module is with you or installed tightly on the drone, and that the port is free of dirt and debris. Clean the lens with a microfiber cleaning cloth to prevent any blurry photos. Make sure that the drone, as well as the RC, are up to date on firmware. Checking the firmware ahead of time will allow you to be more time efficient in the field and prevent wasting or draining a charged battery to power the drone while a firmware update occurs. Format your SD card, ensuring that you have already backed up or transferred your previous files from the card. Ensure the card is inserted into your drone before your flight. Next, let us review how flight planning can impact the quality of your survey. When flight planning, it is important to keep a few general rules in mind. When using the propeller PPK workflow, there are minimum time periods required for each individual flight. 10 minutes for arrow point ones, 10 minutes if arrow point twos and the propeller corrections network will be used, two minutes if using the arrow point twos and a known point, and 15 minutes if using the wing tra. If using a mixed fleet of arrow points, go with the higher collection time. The total time between the first photo collected and the last photo collected must be at least 10 minutes long per battery. There are four methods that can be used to achieve this minimum flight time. First, pausing the drone in the middle of the mission so that the total time meets the recommended minimum. Second, lowering the flight height forces the drone to collect more photos. Third, decreasing the speed of the drone. And fourth, we can increase the side and frontal overlap which will increase the length of the flight. Another general rule is that the flight plan should have a square or rectangular shape. Offshoots, peninsulas, or protrusions shooting out of the main area can be problematic without additional ground control points. Usually, issues occur if there are fewer than three flight lines in these areas. If you must capture an area with an offshoot or protrusion, be sure to place an arrow point or additional ground control point in that area. Use the same flight plan every time you fly a site to reduce variability in your flight boundaries and settings. There are a few ways to achieve this, by saving the flight plan on your controller or by creating and storing a KML file for future use on your computer. This can be really helpful when your team has multiple pilots and drones. The last general rule is to see if the expected weather requires you to change any flight settings a day or two before your flight. For example, if you notice high winds are expected in the area, slow down your drone speed so it can collect survey grade photos. Decreasing your drone speed will stabilize the drone and prevent blurry or unusable photos. In general, weather such as wind, rain, extreme heat, or cold will limit the amount of flight time for your drone. Lighting conditions may also require you to adjust your camera settings. If it is very overcast and darker than normal during your flight, you may have to reduce your shutter speed to prevent a high ISO and lower your flight speed to prevent motion blur in your photos. Always try to fly when the sun is the highest in the sky. This is especially important during winter months when the daylight is limited. If the conditions are not ideal, reschedule your flight for another day. 
It is important to note that the recommended drone settings work great for most situations. However, if you are flying in windy conditions, low light environments, or areas lacking in unique identifiers like tree canopies or water, you will need to change some settings to optimize data collection for your best results. Check out our knowledge base and review our recommended drone settings to see how to modify them for the best results in challenging environments. Before heading to the field for your survey, be sure to check for any airspace restrictions. Checking for airspace is imperative to maintain the safe and legal operation of your drone. Restricted airspace is often seen when operating in or around an airport, but there could also be some temporary flight restrictions due to large stadium sporting events or VIP travel, such as government officials. If you are using a DJI drone, their software creates geofences that will prohibit you from flying your mission in restricted airspace. In these cases, you must unlock the airspace and import your certificate onto your remote controller and drone prior to your flight. For more information, watch our training video, How to Check and Unlock Airspace, linked in the supporting documentation associated with this module. If you are granted approval to fly in restricted airspace, you may have to adjust your flight altitude. Keep in mind that if you fly below 260 feet or 80 meters, you must make changes to other mission settings in order to produce usable data. If you adjust your height to a lower altitude, we recommend increasing the overlap to prevent holes in your survey and reducing your drone speed to avoid motion blur in the photos. Many poor quality surveys are caused by improper arrow point collection methods. Many environments can impact your arrow point, but to mitigate the risk, follow these recommendations. Make sure the arrow points are on and collecting data for the minimum collection time. Arrow point 1s must capture data for at least 45 minutes, whereas arrow point 2s must capture data for at least 10 minutes. If you have a mixed fleet of arrow point 1s and 2s, they must capture data for at least 45 minutes. Confirm that there are no obstacles between the arrow point and the sky in all direction. Use our 15 degree angle rule to help guide your decision when you are on site deciding where to place your arrow point. Imagine a 15 degree angle in all directions from the center of an arrow point. There should not be any obstructions like trees, buildings, power lines, or other obstacles impacting the arrow point's view of the sky. For arrow point twos, after visually confirming there are no obstacles, open the arrow points app on your mobile device. From here, you can see if the arrow point is fully charged, collecting data, or sensing an obstacle nearby that might require you to move an arrow point. Using the Arrow Points app and reviewing the Arrow Points diagnostic information while in the field has prevented many customers from having to refly sites. Keep in mind that your vehicle used to drive around the site is considered an obstacle, and one of the more common obstacles seen in poor Arrow Point surveys. As a rule of thumb, your Arrow Point should be twice as far away from obstacles as they are tall. Arrow Points should be placed on a relatively flat surface no more than a maximum of 20 degrees from horizontal. Arrow points must remain unmoved during data capture. If your arrow point is moved during one of your surveys, please consider reflying or inform the propeller team using the comments box in the uploader. The best arrow point placement is within two flight rows of your mission boundary. Placing your arrow point well within the mission boundary will ensure we will have a good view of the ground control during processing, leading to a more accurate model. In this module, we went over how to improve the quality of your datasets, including checking your hardware, planning your flight, checking and unlocking airspace, and proper arrow point placement in the field. Thank you for watching. For more information, you can read the supporting documentation for this module or check out our knowledge base, help.propellerarrow.com.